Well, this is gonna be the review of stove number two, or the parts of stove number two. Uh, this should be the end of the review. This sucks, it fell apart on me, don't get it. That's pretty much what it comes down to, but I will still talk about my experiences anyway with this one. Um, same as uh, stove number one and stove number three, it's gonna use these small cartridges um, of propane. Actually, it doesn't matter if you have a small one or a large one, it just has to have this particular nozzle type, so it obviously fits properly. Um, you can get these fuel canisters for about five bucks or so. Um, I am going to weigh this for you real quick. Assuming you did get this and yours didn't fall apart on you. You might want to know what it weighs. So, um, just like the other reviews, I'm going to weigh them uh, together to get a combined weight. I have to be thrifty here and put all the parts on. Since it is in pieces, which is not good. Alright, so the stove itself weighs 3.7 ounces. Of course, you want to add that to the fuel source, which without it, it is useless. And this weighs, I'm going to look around here, 9.64 ounces. All right, so there you go. Now, my experiences with this, um, before I get into the obvious fact that it fell apart and it's a piece of crapola, um, the case, starting with the case, I don't like the case. Compared to the stove one and stove three, they have this type of plastic case. It gives, it's flexible, uh, it seals very nicely. Um, this one is, you know, it's hard plastic. Uh, I think it's going to be very brittle. If you were to say, you know, drop this or there's an impact on it, I know it would crack and break horribly. Because this is broken and I don't need this anymore, I will demonstrate that for you. Even my knuckle. not exactly what I meant to do. Well, now the case won't even open. Oh uh, yeah, fine. You're not going to have an impact like that normally. But uh, you know what? I have to say, I'm going to try that again because that was pleasantly surprising. The way this plastic feels, I really thought that if it, you took a little bit of an impact, I mean hardly anything, that it would break and shatter into pieces and stuff. But to be honest, this is pretty darn flexible plastic. This could take time of beating. So pleasantly surprised there. Not that it matters because this holds nothing since I'm going to throw this stove out after the review. But let's try that again just for craps and giggles. Alright. So there's our case. Probably shouldn't be using my hand just in case, but here we go. You know what? I'm hitting that pretty damn hard, and it's not breaking, just the hinges popping off. Alright, well you know what? I reassessed this case. This is a really good strong case, <laughs> but it's not going to matter because you're not going to use it. Because when your stove falls apart, you're going to throw the whole thing in the garbage and probably curse. So, moving on to the stove. Um, <laughs> it fell apart on me. This is what I think happens. I can see how it goes together. Here's the base. This is what um, attaches to the top of our can, just like so. Okay, and obviously this extends. This is going to be our adjustment. Um, this goes in here, and actually, a little circle right there, that little hole. That, I'm assuming, lined up right there, because it lines up perfectly, so it's a safe assumption. And then this hole right here for the igniter lines up as well. There's a larger one here to put the tip of the screwdriver through. So it should look like this. Let me get the hold. This is how the stove looks, okay? And it was grand and everything until either a pin or a screw. Uh, you know what? It has to be a screw because the hole there leads me to believe they're giving you a larger space to put the tip of the screwdriver through. So there must have been a screw in here. But I guess it was loose. I was outside literally using this, uh, doing the demo of boiling some water. And um, as I was unscrewing it, the whole thing went boom, and just, it just fell apart in pieces. And I'm outside on my deck in the snow. So the tiny, tiny screw, whatever it is, it's gone forever. And it's gone. So uh, I could, I suppose, find a screw that fits this. Not going to bother. Um, it's garbage. I, I don't rely, I wouldn't rely on it now. Um, plus, beyond that, even if it didn't fall apart, let's say you do get this one. You know, maybe you take the screw out on purpose, put some Loctite on there, make sure it's not going to happen to you. Fine. Uh, I don't like the stove design. 
there's definitely some pros and cons. Like I said, all these small pocket stoves, micro stoves, they're gonna have pros and cons. Um, the pro to this one uh, that I really liked is that the feet, there's only three instead of four, but they're much larger. And also the pieces that extend here were also larger. Okay, so this gave you a nice, big, sturdy base. I like that a lot. Um, what I did not like about this at all is that the jets, the, by design, these jets, they shoot out on a, like a 45 degree angle. So all of our flame is going like this, as opposed to the first stove that I did the review on, our jet was straight up, straight up into whatever container that we're trying to warm up or heat, food, water, what have you, okay? That was effective, all right? And in the review, you'll see how long it took to boil water in that one. This one took about 33% more time because of the fact that this jet was shooting outward. All right, so let's say here's my, my bottle or whatever I'm trying to, to heat up, right? My pot of water, whatever it is, right in the middle. Well, all the fire and flame and heat is going out on angles instead of right up into my pot or bottle, it's going around it. So it's you know giving it heat, but not direct heat. I didn't like that at all. Um, the only benefit to this would be if you had a much larger pot but in my demo, I was using a bottle with a very narrow base, which in your case, you may be using. And it's just not effective that way. This jet style did not work as well as the other ones, which were direct heat, you know, right up uh, in the center, no angles. So huge con, uh, in my opinion, because you're not able to uh, very consistently heat up small containers. And for a small stove like this, you're probably not traveling with huge pots and pans. Uh, you're probably traveling with a canteen or a bottle or something of that nature. So by design, don't like that part of it. The pro was the big feet. The con was there's no base. I was talking about this with the other one. This is the base you're holding on to, to, to actually put the fuel tank on. So I didn't like that. Not a huge deal. Um, the igniting system worked beautifully on this one. Unfortunately, it broke, but uh, it was very consistent. worked every single time. I think the reason being is because you see there's a plate here. So instead of this, the end, throwing a spark on the jet, which the first model, uh, the first stove, uh, that's the design, this is actually throwing the spark onto a smaller plate, okay, which is touching that. So there's much more surface area, all right? So when this sends a spark through here, it's actually sending that spark through a larger surface area than as opposed to that one spot it would have hit without the plate. So that design, very nice. But in the end, it fell apart. So it's useless to me. So I am going to throw this out. And uh, I don't like it at all. Um, even if it, like I said, even if it didn't fall apart, I don't like the jet style. I prefer the first one more. But regardless, it is what it is. Um, I'm gonna show you right now the boiling process. Uh, again, just using the same 27 ounce clean canteen bottle, trying to get that uh, to a boil in 30 degree weather with no top. So check that out right now. Hey, what's up guys? Well, this is going to be boiling water with stove number two. This is the one that came with the crappy case. Um, weighed about 40 minutes with fresh water, washed everything out. So this is now the temperature out here, 30 degrees outside. You can see it's not boiling or anything. Nice and cool or cold. Uh, I'm going to get this stove started. And once again, I'm going to see how long it takes to boil this. This is a 27 ounce water bottle with an open top in 30 degree weather. In case you didn't see the first one. Here's my outside thermometer. So I'm just doing some testing, seeing, seeing how these perform in boiling some water. So let's get this one started. Okay. <laughs> All right, so got the water bottle here. Got my timer ready. Put the bottle on. Of course, leg folded in when I turned it. All right, so here we go. Water bottle is on, and timer's going. All right, guys, we're almost at 10 minutes here. Starting to drizzle a little bit. Um, you can see we're getting a little bit of uh, steam off the top of the bottle, and we're barely at a simmer though. Definitely some air bubbles coming up, but I wouldn't even say it's a full simmer. It's warming up for sure, but definitely taking much longer than the uh, the first one, um, you know, the first little stove. And again, it's just because it's not direct heat. So I'll get back with you when we're at a full boil. 
we finally have a boil. Almost 20 minutes. So that's a long time to wait for boiling water. Especially if you're really cold and wet like I am right now. So anyway, let's turn this off. All right, I think this is noteworthy. Um, <laughs> literally trying to just unscrew this uh, stove. It's super hot still. Um, it literally fell apart on me. So a pin popped out, something fell. I don't know what, but it literally just fell apart. So this is rendered completely useless. Here's the igniter. There's the stove part, which is still screaming hot. And of course, the valve, which is on the bottom. <sighs> don't waste your money. For 10 bucks, it's, uh, it's not worth it. Uh, I don't care if it was a dollar. If it doesn't work or if it falls apart, especially, you know, if you really need the thing and you're not just doing some testing, if you're really out in the woods and you're hungry or you're cold or you need some water uh, boiled or whatever, uh, definitely cannot rely on this piece of junk. Don't get one. In conclusion, I think we're all in agreement that any kind of gear or any, you know, uh, anything you want to put in your kit for survival, if it falls apart on you and it's not going to be reliable, uh, you, you don't want it. You shouldn't have it. So actually, I'm going to keep this. I might be able to reuse that for something. But um, this is garbage. This is going right in the garbage with the strong, apparently strong case. <laughs> um, that's it. It's garbage. Don't buy this. Don't waste your money. It's like another dollar compared to the first one. At least the first one's been working for me, although not consistent. Stove number one is working, and it's cheaper. So there's no reason I ever buy this piece of crap. So there you go. People say, Jeff, why don't you do bad reviews? Because usually I don't buy things or I don't trade for things. Or I don't get things that I know I'm not going to like. This is a shot in the dark. This is a very cool thing. It was a very, you know, a small stove. I'm not, um, I don't have a bunch of these types of things, so I don't know what to expect. But in the end, my suggestion is don't get this one at all. These types of stoves, very cool. But get yourself a quality one, something you can rely on. Pay more money for something that you can really rely on. Unless it's just some dinky hobby that you're going to forget about in two weeks. If that's the case, then sure. Get the Chinese one that's going to fall apart on you. At least you'll use it a couple times and get some joy out of it. But most people don't think like that. So <laughs> you're probably going to want to spend a couple extra bucks and get something that's quality. So that's my opinions. That's my thoughts. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you soon. Take care.